Why should we give land to the Indians when it clearly says on the paper it belongs to the farmers? But surely you must realize that this is their home. These indigenous tribes have been living on this land for hundreds of years. Listen, this war is not fair. Some people win, some people lose. The whole world think they can tell Brazil what to do with her land. Sorry, no. We do what we please. Mana Dilhi. Mohin or Sotlon Dorshahad. You didn't see Munzuk Bosomburt, M. Mendel to be here, Zachsung Agil the Kuchnutin, Zoglux in Fon Bile. Mink Mengil Hindush, Soil Rinslut, Dilhige, Iji Himing Mirch Sanche. incredibly beautiful planet, a home that we will hopefully pass on to generations to come. But as the years go by, it's becoming increasingly hard to imagine what kind of a world we're leaving behind us. We've spent the last four years traveling around the world, filming the stark reality that people now face from the threat of ecological collapse. It's now become very clear to us that there's one thing driving the destruction of our ecosystems faster than anything else. Let us show you how this very same thing might just also be our salvation. environmental scientists warn that we are fast approaching the point of no return if we don't make a substantial course reversal. We see really serious catastrophic effects in the next few years, certainly in the next decade or two. The world will, will be com completely different from the way it is now. Сүүлийн 50 жилд өмнөх 100 жилтэй хайрцуулахад цаг уртаа холбоотой байгалийн гамшиг дөрв дахин ихссэн байна. We began to work together to move this issue onto the global center stage. There was a lot of discussion about the contribution from uh, buildings and from industrial factories, uh, but I became aware during that same period of time that there was another factor that was going undiscussed. And that is the role of animal and agriculture, which I could see was playing some significant role around the planet. But this was the elephant in the room no one wanted to talk about. Whatever environmental issue you want to look at, from you know, species loss to water pollution to water use to climate change, animal agriculture is one of the top causes. The critical widespread negative impact of animal agriculture on our planet is undeniable. Severe global crises from climate change and environmental damage to species extinction, hunger, poverty, disease, and antibiotic resistance, all of these have direct connections to animal agriculture and the massive inefficiency of our current food production systems. 
бүр 2009 онд Wikileaks илчилсэн Nestle Corporates болон Америкийн нэгдсэн улсын албаны хүмүүсийн хоорондын тойм гэж нэрлэсэн яранд. Nestle-гийн удирдлагууд тэдний өөрсдийн судалгаагаар дэлхийн цэвэр усны нөөц эрх 30 жилийн дотор шавхдаг хандлагатай байна гэсэн байна. Энэ мөхлийн зам руу хөтөлж буй асар том шалтгаануудын нэг нь дэлхийн махан бүтээгт хүний эрэлт хэрэгцээ юм гэж тэр судалгаа нь цохон тэмдэглэжээ. If you look at the the impact that food choice has on on global warming it's very significant. Eating meat is huge for global climate and that's something where personal choice is the determining factor. So there's the only case I can think of where individual human choice would have a big effect would be uh, food we're now over the line and the idea that we're going to double meat production between now and 2050 this is just unsustainable this is going to have to give our diet is taking us to an abyss a significant reason why livestock production has been having such a huge impact on greenhouse gas emissions is because of the large surfaces of forests that have been destroyed in order to make room for pastures and for the uh, growth of soybean and maize uh, for feedstock production. Ах хөвч маань гайхамшигтай ам амьдрал дүүрэн байсан үе би. Сүүлийн жилүүдэд бидний мах сүний дуршил ханаж татгаа болж тийнхүү махны хэрэгцээ нэмэгдэв тусам улам их газар хэрэгтэй болсон байна. Бид онгон дагшин ой модыг тайран шатааж, замдаа тэгэлсэн бүхнийг сүйтгэж, өөрсдөө идэх гэж шүлэнтэж буй малдаа зай гаржээ. Байгалийн жамаар идэшлэн бэлчих боломжгүй мал сүргийн бэлчээрийн газар нь удаж төдлөгүй халцрна. Мэдээжийн хэрэг малаа цаашид тэжээсээр л байх хэрэгтэй. Энэ хүү дахиад улам их ой модыг тайрч, шатаан давшиж, тэр газраа гинийн өөрчлөлттэй эрдэн шиш, шар буурцаг тариална. Хортон амтан хог урмал устгагч бодис хиймэл хиймийн бордонд газар нэвшрэн. Мал аж ахуй манай гаргийн нүүр царайг шууд утгаар нь өөрчилсөн юм. Энэ ногоон газар бол хүний хүнс тархад зориулсан. Дэлхий даяар үргэлжлэсэн гайхалтай газар. Харин мал аж ахуй зориулсан газар нь энэ харагдаж буй улаан тал бай. Дэлхийд хүний хүнсний тариалантай харьцуулшгүй том талбайг эзэлж байна. Almost all the earth surface is now bears the mark of some kind of human impact and most of that is livestock production. Agriculture has transformed the planet like nothing else. To produce milk, we farm an area about the size of Brazil. To produce beef, we farm an area about the size of Canada. The United States, the whole of Central America, Venezuela, Colombia, and Ecuador combined. To produce eggs, we farm an area the size of Sweden. To produce aquaculture feed, an area about the size of the UK. A plant-based diet would reduce the amount of land required to produce our food by 3.1 billion hectares. That's an area the size of the entire African continent. Amazon нь дэлхийн халан орны хамгийн том ширэнгэн ой юм. Энэ эртний бас биологийн төрөл зүйлээр баян ертөнц зугаахан өөр болсоор байна. Бразил тариалдаг шар буурцгны ихэнхийг хүний хүнсэнд хэрэглэдэг гэж андуурх нь нэлбэг. Хэрэг дээрээ дэлхийн шар буурцгны зургаахан хувиас баг хэсгийг хүмүүс иддэг. Дэлхийн хинг нь малын тижил зориулж тариалдаг ажээ. Дэлхийн өнцөг булан бүрт экспортын шар буурцгаар бидний өдөр бүр иддэг тэр бум тэр бум тахиа загас гахаа өхрийг тижээдэг байна. Ай мод бол сая сая зэрлэг амтан урамлын гэртүүдийгүй манай гаргийн өөр амьсгалыг гайхалтай зохицуулах юм. Ай мод өдөр бүр нүрс хүчлийн хийг амьсгалаараа авч тэр бум тэр бум тоон хүчил төрөхчөөр агаар мандлыг хангадаг. жил бүр 18 сая га буюу Панам улсын нутаг дэвсгэртэй тэнцэх үед талбайн ой мод устаж байна. Идүгээ дэлхийн халан орны нас бийг үзсэн ширэнгэн он тал хувь нь устсан хэмээн үзэж байгаа бөгөөд 
эрдэмтдийн өрдчлэн хэлснээр дэлхийн нийтээр шийдвэртэй арга хэмжээ авахгүй бол 2030 он гэхэд энэ ан зөвхөн 15 л үлдэх гэнэ. One of the most precious things we have in the world is our rainforests. The rainforests are literally being uh, chewed away um, by farmers who know they can make money by cutting another acre and then another acre and then another acre for meat. naquele tempo, castigo, então eu já falo, olha, você vai sofrer muito, porque o branco, o ruralismo. Gilbur, Amazônia, Xiringangang, Ogo Zomgin, Zodzong Irigdin, Turlug Tosconigin, Gazarta Tixlin, Xatajuen. Aho Emdrilin Bolsan, Agen, Maltijek Borsani, Terezlingin Tazba Bolsan, Hedzersan, Huda Echuin Bisnesin, Sirichsan Alpenichan, Ogo Dirigdig, Huchir Zedlotta, Ozong Huniami Kunudrege. Хамгийн аймшигтай хэлмэгдсэн омгууд нэг бол Мато Гросо до Сулмужин, Гуарани Кайово юм. Планоги нийшна. Антигаменте ас флоресте ки а наса каза. Кен комесо диструи а наса одея а травес да агропекуари. Derrubaram as nossas matas, destruindo os animais, os rios. Eu estou falando, é, agora vai plantar soja, aí depois vai passar veneno, né, tudo coisa. Vai passar lá dobro também, vai cair tudo no rio. E é, nós é, revoltando no sotê com rato, pra... A sustentar a nossa família. So there was actually a report that came out in 2018, and they found that the world's top five livestock corporations now release more annual greenhouse gas emissions than ExxonMobil, Shell, and BP. It is crazy when you think about it, because the EU is spending 24 billion pounds of taxpayers' money on livestock farming each year. And this is at a time when we are facing an ecological collapse and we drastically need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So it's no surprise that people are asking a lot of questions now about the fact that there seems to be some serious conflicts of interest going on here. There's some very heavy lobbying going on of government. And I think that happens throughout the world. And it's just a historic thing that needs to be, I think, rebalanced. As I've mentioned to you over the phone, um, I've worked with a number of large livestock companies around the world. Um, so the way it works is that a representative from or uh, pays us usually up to half a million euros. We then target the relevant uh, politicians from different governments around the world and motions are made to pass legislation in favor of the companies based on the strategies. For environmental policy, we, we can be very persuasive in order to abolish or, or, or heavily relax environmental regulations in government so our clients have more freedom in their work. Uh, I mean, the other day we managed to kill proposed legislation that would have had a, a huge impact on the industry based on a report from the UNFAO. You know, the industry is, is just concerned with growth, but the environmental data that's coming out now, it's, it's really making that difficult for them. Today, 
democracy does not always function as well as it should because of the huge influence that uh, agribusiness corporations and livestock producers in particular exercise on decision making. A former director of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, Dr. Samuel Jatsi, warned as far back as 2010 that interventions by agribusiness lobbyists were blocking reforms that would offer better standards for human health and preserving the environment. Big animal agribusiness corporations and food producers' influence over political decisions about the regulation of their industry has long been a concern for campaigners who see the narrow interests of the industry taking widespread control. If we have any doubt about how powerful this influence is, we can recall that, for example, when the Advisory Committee on Dietary Guidelines in the US made recommendations to the US government as to how dietary guidelines should be shaped, they were blocked by this very powerful lobby of agribusiness interests. There are close ties between the research organisations and governments and government policy and industry. It's very pervasive because livestock industries depend on government policies that support them. The FAO report um, was prepared within the FAO by specialists of agriculture and livestock production, not by specialists of the environmental issues associated with uh, agricultural production. I believe that a more serious concern, of course, is that the International Meat Association was involved in preparing the report, which does raise the question of the independence with which the study was prepared. Government policy in that regard is not for the benefit of the land, it's for the benefit of the industry. In Tourimbus <laughs> Далайн тухай доктор Сильвия Эрлес илүү мэдлэгтэй хүн хүн цөөхөн. Доктор Эрл бол Америкийн нэгдсэн улсын далай агаар мандал судлалын үндэсний өдөртөх газрын дараагаар томилогдсон анхны эмэгтэй бөгөөд одоо амьд сэрүүн байгаа хүмүүсээс далайн гүн ёроолд татлахгүйгээр хамгийн хол зайнд аялсан дээд амжилтын эзэн. When I was a child the idea of a dead zone in the ocean was, was not even in our vocabulary. But in the 20th century, as agriculture began to greatly expand, the areas around the coast began to show signs of wear and tear. The first, most notorious spotlight area, I think, was off the Gulf of Mexico. And it has simply grown over the years, an annual phenomenon it is coincident with the application of massive amounts of fertilizer. Bidney Hall Bach Mat Empty Tijelik Terelhut, Sai Sai Hafta Rulchin Kilmeter Gatrik the Rulch, Azotin Borto, Mashik Tatstuk. Azotin Tereling in Tatbaras or such, Gol Murni Os, Osmar Dalating through our drain. Azotor by the Gosund, Asrik Zamag or the Bugod, Sansra Sarata Hurtli Hinjani, Zamagosje. Замаг нь усны хүчил төрөгчийг хорооч ойр орчмдоо байгаа далайн амьд байгалийг хөнөөдөг. Махны хэрэгцээ ихссэн цагаас эдгээр хүчил төрөгч багтаа өхмөл бүсүүд зогсолтгүй өссөөр байна. There are hundreds of dead zones that have developed all around the coastlines of the world and 
Okay, people say, that's, that's too bad for the fish. So sorry, fish. But we need to understand that what we do to the ocean, we're doing to ourselves. I want others to see and, and to see for themselves. This is all we've got, this little blue miracle. Зарим хүн мах итгэ болж загас хэдүүл гарг дэлхийд элдэ нөлөө үзүүлнэ гэж боддог. Үүнээс илүү ташаа ойлголт гэж байхгүй билээ. Далай сүнвэл магадгүй хүмүүс бид хамт сүнэн. Учир нь бидний амьсгалж буй агаарын тэн хагасыг далай өсгдөг. Шинжлэх ухааны тэргүүлэгч хэвлэл Nature сэтгүүл бичсэнээр 1950-аад оноос хойш Далайн нийт том загасны бараг 90% нь устжээ. Мөн энэ нейчер сэтгүүл бичсэнчлэн загасны нөөцийн нарийвчилсан судалгаануудын нэгэнд өнөөгийн загасчлалын хурдаар бол дэлхийн загасны аж ахуй 30 жилээс богино хугацаанд уналтан дарна гэжээ. Далайн амьдралыг устгаж буй гол шалтгаан бол загасчлал юм гэж IPBS буюу биологийн олон янз байдал ба экосистемийг зохицуулах засгийн газруудын хөдөлмөрөөс үзэж байна. Загас идэх дур бидний амьдралын далайг шууд утгаар нь шавхаж байна. Today we have agreed on fishing opportunities for European fishermen worth more than 5 billion euros and benefiting more than 50,000 fishermen. The catches agreed today will continue to make the European fishing industry highly profitable also in 2019. Норвегулс байгалийн үзэсгэлэн сайхан орон. Гэхдээ энэ нутагт нууцлаг бараан тал бас бий. Норвег нь үржүүлгийн загасны хамгийн том экспортлогчдын нэг. Загасны аж ахуй энэ улсын эдийн засагт тэр бүм тэр бүм евро оруулдаг. Далайн том зэрлэг загас устгийн ирмэгт тулж цөөрхийн хэрээр загасчд загасны аж ахуй байгуулж загасыг хяналттай орчинд үржүүлж байна. Норвег нь дэлхийн аль ч орноос илүү их хэмжээгээр ярга ба сангамхай загас өсгдөг. Өнөөдөр хүмүүсийн идэж буй загасны 7 орчим хувийг загасны фермийн хиймэл цөөрөнд үржүүлдэг байна. Далайн усна нэн давчууд хоронд 1000 мянган загас шигүү байдгаас болж өвчин эмгэг шимэгч бөөс хялбар дарахж энэ аж ахуйн хувьд асар том асуудал болжээ. Тимээс ч загасыг зах зээлд хүртэл удаан амьдруулахын тулд хортон шавж устгагч халдваргүй жүлэгч болон антибиотикийг маш их хэмжээгээр хэрэглэдэг аж. 
Zasni bo sik sat khen tot, zero sat tin shahorok zev hirin tling, zasik abro kosun saro tar dish sarn. Daran tuhorim sistem ro shahorok tach, tuwer tam jung ors khiaf tsin, nik bot unyur tim portorar hatan, is bot himin os matogaj, ihik bos nusun sat hat, tortu irul shahtak. Zasik shimich botlon uch nusun sat khen tot, os turchin hitisil, azametifos tirik himin bat saro gaj. Asar Horta Shinch Chandra Puhi, Ziflu Benzoron, Emma Mekzin Botong, Ziflu Benzoron Kichmit, Himi Betsi, Tijeltin Hajjuktuk. Sotlach Didger Himi Bets, Zaksen Chingich, it's the Bitni Taugendir Zaksna Sidirik Tokhtaji. Dikhin Hanch, Zaksni Fermin Zaks, Im Sweetig. Bagatoschung Hamratach, Tarin Bishop. Baron Irgin Bergen Tufte, Green Warriors Boyo, Nahon Dachit Gitig, Bergs Hamrath Bergot Rihanta, Old Jen. Green Warriors and Nothing Ecosystem, Zarsni Achwing Wilajla, Hirhung Horhunu Lachit Buig, Ottenjil Sotsen Bogot, Zars Urtuling, Ungut Sturzorging Art Bui, Suder Tatig, Tarin Harot Haryawanin. Ossen Chumbuch, Zerutis Dinzel, Tornidor, Dalang Yorazik Harp Bosn Jotho. Далан яроод тэр чигтээ загсны ялгдас бактери болон үлдэж хаягдсан тижээлээс үүссэн нэм зузаан лаг давхар харагдана. Яролын лаг давхарга нь тижээл тойлсон хортон шимэгч устгагч бодисоор дүүрэн. Дэлхий даярх загсны фермүүдээс далан экосистем рүү маш ихээр оруулж буй хортон устгагч бодисон далай тэнгисийн биологийн унхан олон янз байдалд асар хор нөлөөтэй гэдгийг шинэ судалгаа олж тогтоожээ. Мөн энэ лаг давхарга нь уур амьсгал дулаар болгоч метаныг асар ихээр ялгаруулдаг байна. Оксфордын их сургуулийн судлаачд усан дахь зарим аж ахуй өхрийн махны үлдрэлээс жилүү их метан ялгаруулж байгааг тогтоожээ. Лив Холмфорд бол Норвегийн загасны аж ахуйн өдөр дахь газрын дарга. Норвегт байхдаа бид түүнийг улсын загасны аж ахуйг өдөртөн зохицуулах үүргийнхэн хажуугаар Норвегийн загасны аж ахуйн хамгийн том компаниудын нэгэнд хувьцаа эзэмшдгийг олж мэдсэн юм. Байгаль хамгаалагчд олноороо үүнийг ашиг сонирхлын том зөрчил гэж үзэж байна. Холмфорд таринта уулзаж Норвегийн загасны фермүүдийн талаарх бидний асуулт нь тариулахыг зөвшөөрсөн юм. Well, fish farming is quite a new industry in Norway. It started back in the 1960s with some local entrepreneurs starting with hobby and it's grown until it's a billion euro industry today. And um, seafood is the second largest export industry in Norway and fish farming accounts for two-thirds of the export value of seafood. So recently we found out that you also have shares in one of the largest fish farm companies in Norway. Do you not feel that that's a conflict of interest? Uh, of course, there could be a con uh, in conflict of interest, uh, but this is a fact that's been known since before I got this position, and I've been open about it. I do not. I'm not involved in the business from uh, day to day or at any. So it's and if there's. Um, uh, we have, and um, I have. Sorry, I have to. Do you have to start over again? Can I hit the ref knocker? So all the decisions that I made will either be for the whole industry, not especially for this fish farm, or it's only an advice to the politicians, and the politicians are setting the limits and the actual regulations. So, if there's an actual case uh, handling regarding this company, then I will step aside. few jobs and I was working here over the years as a diver. We used to go around the fish farms cleaning the, the dead deceased fish from the nets and uh, fixing the nets etc after storms. 
and on occasion we'd seen some of the boats coming in to clean the uh, lice off them. It's quite a lot of dead fish, yeah. you know, yeah. diseased or they've died, but it's a lot of pink mush, you know, not, 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 uh, not healthy look. Having seen what I've seen and worked on the various sites round about where I've been in Scotland, I, I wouldn't eat farmed salmon. Uh, no, I would have <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty rank. Salmon is marketed as healthy. It's also marketed in, in, in a very devious way, deceptive way, that they think it's a wild product. So it's a fake product, it's a fatty product, it's contaminated, it's marketed as healthy, but, it, but it's not. So salmon, if you see salmon, alarm bells should start ringing. It's pretty grim when you dive down to the bottom of the cages because, you know, we always see the bottom full of dead fish. And it's basically because many of these fish are so diseased, so parasite-ridden and laden with chemicals that they become sick and they live out their sad, short lives basically looking like zombies. You know, you don't see this when you go to the restaurant or the supermarket, but this is basically what a lot of the fish actually look like before it ends up on our plates. So tonight, Don wanted to show us how much of the farmed fish actually dies. Because of the very unnatural and unsanitary ways that they are kept, and they have rows of very large metal containers that they are constantly filling up with the dead fish. And I have to say that the smell as we get closer is actually pretty disgusting. So this is the sordid side of salmon farming in Scotland. This is the, the dirty secrets the industry don't want you to see. This is disease-ridden farm salmon. It's 15 to 20% fat. That's where the contaminants, the cancer-causing contaminants, PCBs, dioxins, and the artificial colorings are. So this is something to be avoided at all costs. This is the salmon farm just here. We got free information data from the Scottish Environment Protection Agency showing the use of over 50 tonnes of formaldehyde, not just at this site, but other sites across Scotland, is formaldehyde may cause cancer, suspected of causing genetic defects, toxic if swallowed, may cause respiratory irritation, causes damage to organs, do not breathe. One of the fish farm workers told us that the workers um, come down to the farms um, early in the morning, spraying the chemicals into the fish cages. So they're obviously spraying something down there in the water. The guy who gave us the tip off said that toxic chemicals are widely used across Scotland, including formaldehyde and also hydrogen peroxide. And these are supposed to treat the diseases and lice problems which were rampant across the fish farms. You know, these are not chemicals that you want in your body. Whatever he's spraying must be pretty powerful if he needs to wear a full protective chemical suit and a face mask. Далайн сав шим 7 тэрбум хүний хогийн цэг болж фермүүд загсаа химийн бодсоор хахтал бордож байгаа гээд ботхоор загс итгэн хизээч одоогийн хшиг ийм хортой байсангүй.
You know, our oceans have become humanity's sewers. Everything eventually flows into the sea. So if you had a, you know, time machine that go back before the Industrial Revolution, it's a different story. But now, the highest levels of many of these persistent organic pollutants, we're talking about, you know, DDT and PCBs and uh, dioxins, the highest levels in our food supply are found in the aquatic food chain. Fish are not the safest choice anymore. So, Tony, it's great to see you. Great to see you as well. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Not at all. Thank you. A pleasure being here. So, I wanted to ask you if you could share with us what, is, what exactly it was you began to feel when you realized something was going wrong. I was exhausted more than usual, and then I was losing short-term memory, and that scared the hell out of me. And then I tore my rotator cuffs in a really intense snowboarding accident, and the doctor said, do you want to do your metals test? And I said, ah, I got my amalgams out 25 years ago. He goes, there's so many metals in the environment, you should do it. So I did, I get a phone call a week later, and I said to my assistant, just have him send the report, and he said, no, it's an emergency, he has to speak to you. And I was like, no one wants to hear that. And so I called him up and he said, Tony, I showed your blood tests, you have extreme mercury poisoning. On a zero to five scale, which is what we measure, five being toxic, you're 123. The doctor said, how long has this man been in the hospital? And I just got off stage. So I, I, I said, I can't understand this. So I, I went out and they thought, you know, maybe someone was trying to poison me because the number was so high. And I was very disciplined. I was a vegan for 12 years, and then I just went salad fish, salad fish. And they brought the medical group out here, and they looked at it. And I found this man named Dr. Shade, who's the only guy who has an ideation process where you can see where the mercury came from, and it was fish. Mm -hmm. It's been three years, um, and I had some severe moments. It burned a hole in my esophagus, and I literally collapsed. I lost a third of my blood supply. I could have died. I lost half my hemoglobin. People begin to lose their hair, yes. their memory. They lose their memories, as you were doing, as you, yes. no, as you yes. noticed. But they can also have headaches. They can complain of fatigue. Um, they can also have depression. What we're seeing now is with the toxic environmental exposure, and especially with the mercury, methyl mercury in fish, is that everyone has got to be careful because yes. the levels are going up. Udo, tell me, because your specialty is in this, how do you get the fish oils that we all need for the brain and for the body uh, if we can't have fish? What, yeah. what do you suggest? Well, we used to get them from fish oils. Yes. And, but we can actually get them from vegetables. Flax is the richest source of omega-3 that we everybody thinks should come from fish oil. If you get enough of that as starting material, your body will make what the fish oils make and it'll be clean. Many people take fish oils or have fish for the long chain omega-3 fatty acids. And you have to ask yourself the question, well, where do the fish get them from? And it turns out they get them from the algae in the ocean. They get them from plant food. So if you want the purest form of the long chain ready-made omega-3 fatty acids, the best way of doing that is simply to take an algae supplement because then you've got the purest form of it and you don't have the extra risks of having the toxins and the heavy metals and the saturated fat and the cholesterol that you would get from eating a fish. Zasni ajkhon bokhor dulagchdig sudlsan tomokhon sudlganud inig n San Diego dach California ek surgul in scripsin dalas sudlsin hurilin gii irdin tiin hiisan mirgjil n ehtnun dee unlgae sudlgaa yom. Irdim tiid dilhiin dalan haan chalgaa gui zagsnaas hort bokhor dulagch bokhor dulagch bokhor dulagch bokhor Nobody would go to the nearest body of water and put in like a cup and drink the water, um, you're, you're basically getting the concentrated toxins if we're eating fish. Ocean <laughs> Nature сэтгүүл цайхан идлэгдсэн нэгэн судалгаа номхон далаан хувьнцрын 80 хувь нь зага салбарлах хэрэгслийн хог хаягдал болохыг олж тогтоожээ. Энэхүү хувьнцрчсэн далаан асуудлыг шийдвэрлэхэд хувь хүний оруулах хамгийн агуу хувь нэвэр бол зага сэтгэхээс татгалзаж ургамлын гартаа хоол нь шилжих гэдэгтэй олон эрдэмтэн санал нээлдэг. At least half of the plastic in the sea today comes from discarded or lost fishing gear. Because all those nets, all those lines, all that stuff, it's, it's just become a plasticized ocean. 
But we have a chance. We have a chance right now to change our eating habits. There's an estimate that there's over five trillion tons of plastic currently floating in the ocean. It's absolutely everywhere. Everywhere we look, we found microplastics, whether it's at the polar regions, in remote islands. Also, if we're looking on the surface or the seabed, and everywhere in between, we find microplastics. We've also found microplastics in just about every animal group that we've looked in. We've been sampling for microplastics for quite a while now, and we found that there's 27 times more bits of plastic than there are fish larvae. Microplankton gichemtan dalaid haasagu tarhsan, shuud shimg zamar hoolloog chhuvmul amid bies. Sodlaachid planktoni amdarh orchand bichil hovansarig orolj ughhud, tiid bichil hovansar hishhudig baang zailgin idaj buin ajiwil gadjay. Hiimiin hort baitsoos bhutsan bichil hishhudig planktoon yalgj salgachgu idzairl. Sodlaachid dalaang eyn ujjuhun amdardin bied hiimiin baits hirhan hormtlag daj buig ajiwil san baan. Hor hormtloos san planktoon or tom zags hoolsan. Sodlaach ad odoo cagd bidni eidwj bwy zagasni maachand dair chymi bwetsu dyn dîl yng hyn biolog yn zamar hormtlach zan baidgig tohdoo jy. Climatyn eich sorwool yng sodlach agar shinjil san nid zagasni gwrwny nigaas ilu hwfd Bichil hoofn sir eilir sain ajay. Eyn hw bachurtsan zagsig eithgid bidni bid hiimiin hort baits uj jyngdig. Tegsnair hwni bid nigin aidl hort baits yng hormtlal uusdig sŵlyn uyn sodlga harolj wain. Our scientists tell us we're now in the sixth extinction event of life on this Earth. It doesn't even make the headlines. No one even knows about it. ตอนนี้น่าหวังกูเก็บกันเพราะอาจจะนึกขึ้นนี่ใส่ติดตาดีใส่ใส่เมตานี่ใส่ยันนี่เราเด็กยันนี่ติดใส่ปอตรยันน
It's up to all of us to make sure that um, this doesn't happen in the future. Today, over 26,000 species are currently threatened with extinction, and the most important driver of that is our use of land for agriculture. Over time, um, livestock have been a major, major driver of biodiversity loss. Some have predicted that by 2045, the species loss will be so great that we won't recover. The earth will suffer ecological collapse. And the biggest thing you and I can do is change our diet. Зарим эрдэмтэд одоогийн энэ хямралыг биологийн мөхөл хэмээн нэрлэдэг болжээ. Флоридагийн их сургуулийн нийт хүрээлэн буюу орчны шинжлэх ухаан сэтгүүл бичсэнээр мал аж ахуй нь биологийн төрөл зүйлүүд устаж буян гол шалтгаан юм. Шинжлэх ухаан сэтгүүлд нийтлэгдсэн судалгаагаар дэлхийн нийтээрээ зөвхөн ургамлын гаралтай хоол хүнсэн шилжүүл дэлхийн үржил шимт газрын 75 хувь чөлөөлөгдөж мал аж ахуй зориулан тайрч цэвэрлсэн ихэнх ой мод нөхөн сэрэх боломжтой ажээ. Дэлхий даяар яг энэ чиглэлээр олон сайхан санаачлах хэрэгжиж байна. Тэдгээрийн нэг нь Ecosiac их Google-тэй ижил төстэй онлайн хайлтын систем бөгөөд тэд зар сурталчлагааны орлого орон нутгийн бүлгүүдийн мод тарих зардлыг төлөхөд зарцуулдаг. Ecosiac-ийн гол ажил тийнийг Mauricio бол Бразилийн ширэнгэн ойг нөхөн сэрэхийн төлөө шургуу хөдөлмөрлөж байгаа хүн юм. Plantaeum mia primeira árvore tinha 5 anos de idade. Eu nem imaginava que 20 anos depois é, esse esforço tão pequeno teria virado uma das iniciativas que mais plantou árvores na história do Brasil. Foram mais de 2 milhões e meio de árvores, 2 mil hectares plantados, muitas áreas preservadas pela ação de combate a incêndios florestais. Амсгалара манай дэлхийд амьдрал хайрладаг. Бид мод суулгах бүртээ гараг дэлхий дээрх өөрсдийнхөө ирээдүйн жинхэнэ үрийг тавьдаг билээ. Бидний хоол хүнс байгаль орчинд хэрхэн нөлөөлж буйг нарийн судалсан хамгийн сүүлийн үе судалгаа бол олон улсын эрдэмтдийн багийн гаргасан мэрэгжил нэгтнүүдийн үлгээ бүхий сэтгүүл юм. Английн Оксфордын их сургуулийн эрдэмтэн доктор Марко Спрингмани удирдсан энэхүү түүхэн судалгаа Парисын уур амьсгалын хилцээрийн дагуу дэлхийн дулаарлын хэмийг Цельсийн хоёр хэмээс доош барих аливь боломжийг хангахын тулд өндөр орлогтой улс орнууд махны хэрэглээгээ 80 орчим хувиар огцсон буруулах шаардлагатай гэж тооцжээ. Policymakers have been very, very reluctant to address the livestock issue. It's entirely out of keeping with the urgency of the crisis that we're facing. Hi, Otto Brockway for Brockstar Films. Um, this is a question for Commissioner Hogan. The scientists at Oxford University have been very clear that livestock farming has a far greater impact than plant-based farming. With this in mind, would it not be common sense to reduce the billions in subsidy payments to livestock farming in Europe and offer them to plant-based farming instead as an incentive to a much more sustainable food system? We have made our proposals based on protecting the farmers uh, because they are, unlike you and I, they're out in all sorts of weathers and in all sorts of market risks. And you and I may not know anything about that because this is their lives. This is they're producing high quality food for us all so that we can have this particular good quality products available to us at all times. Sometimes under local conditions like organic, more times it's conventional farming. So we provide financial support at the moment for that. And it's a public good that's not always recognized. But the movement of our policy is in the direction of our farmers being centrally involved in providing more public goods. And if you want to do anything in life, you have to pay people. Sometimes I understand that there's a moral obligation and there's people of principle. But most of the time, 99% of the time, they have to get paid. So as professionals that we're expecting to provide good quality food and do more on public goods, we pay our farmers. This is the decision that we make at political level. Livestock emit methane and nitrous oxide. Now most people, when they think of climate change, they think of CO2, carbon dioxide, which is a very potent global warming gas. But methane is 25 times more potent per molecule when it's released than CO2. 
and nitrous oxide is 298 times more potent per molecule than CO2. These are very powerful global warming gases. So today we have a very special camera um, called a hyperspectral imaging camera. And it basically enables us to be able to see gases that would be otherwise invisible to the naked eye. And today we're looking at methane gas. Methane is a gas that is being produced by cows when they belch. Бидний хямралтын дор буй метаны хамгийн том их сурвалж бол мал ажих юм. Метаны ялгарлыг огцсон буурулах нь дэлхийн дулаарлыг 15-25 жилээр удаашируулах бөгөөд ойрын шийдвэрлэх он жилүүдэд дулаарлыг багсгах хамгийн үр дүнтэй арга зам болоод байна. Уур амьсгалт нөлөөлөгч хийнүүдийн дулааруулах чадамжийн ялгааг харуулахын тулд хит дулаан туяаны шингээлтийн туршилтыг хийе. Энд бөмбөрцөг дэлхийн хэлбэртэй дөрөв мөсөн баримтлал тус бүр агаар үл нэвтрэх шилэн хорганд байна. Шилэн хорг манай гаргийг хүрээлж буй агаар мандлыг төлөөлнө. Дээр нь нэг бүрчлэн яг ижил хэм дээр тохируулсан хит дулаан туяаны халаагч байрлуулж эдгээр хорг тус бүрийг өөр өөр хийгээр дүүргэсэн болно. Эхний хоргыг бидний өдөр бүр амьсгалдаг ердийн агаараар дүүргэсэн. Хоёр дахийг нь хин хөнгөө мэддэг хөлөмжийн хий болох нүр сүрхчин хийгээр дүүргэсэн. Гурав дахь хоргыг мал ажих хөтө холбоотой метаны хийгээр дүүргэжээ. Харин дөрөв дахь хоргыг азотын давхар эсэл хэмээх мөн л мал ажих хугаас ялгардаг хийгээр дүүргэсэн байна. Хэсэг хугацааны дараа нүр сүчлийн хий дүүргсэн хорган дахь мөсөн бөмбөрцөг ердийн агаарт буутай харьцуулахад баг зэрэг хайлж эхэлснийг бид харж байна. Гэтэл яг адилхан богино хугацаанд метан ба азотын давхар эсэлтэй хорг тус бүрт байгаа бөмбөрцгүүд маш хурдан хайлж эхэлсэн байна. Учран дулааны хэм нь ердийн агаартай хорг ба нүр сүчлийн хийтэй хоргоноос хамаагүй хурдан нэмэлдэжээ. 16 цагийн дараа үр дүн нь бүр их байна. Мал ажих хүн дайвар бүтээгдэхүүн хоёр хий метан болон азотын давхар эсэл нь өөр амьсгалыг асар хүчтэй дулааруулах гэдэг нь маш тодорхой байна. Дэлхий дээр жил бүр хүний хүнсний зориулалтаар өсгөн ядалж буй 70 тэрбум мал амьтны 90% нь тахиа юм. Тахианы махны хэрэглээний одоогийн өсөлт бас асуудал болоод байна. Тахианы махны байгаль орчинд үзүүлэх хуршиг нөлөө улаан махнаас баг хийж дэлхий дээр тахианы 90%-ийг эрчимжүүлсэн фермд өсгөх нь гарг дэлхийд асар их хор нөлөө үзүүлж байна. Махны уураг ба ангаахаа шош зэрэг ургамлын ургийн ижил хэмжээний илчлэхийг харьцуулахад тахианы махны байгаль орчинд үзүүлэх хор уршиг нь өргөн хэрэглэгддэг улаан махнаас баг. Гэсэн атлаа тахианы мах нь ангаахаа шоштой харьцуулахад ургийн нэгж калор тутамд өөр амьсгалыг 40 дахин илүү дулааруулж 50 дахин илүү их ус хэрэглэдэг байна. We know that if we would shift from uh, ruminant meats to other meats then we probably would reduce uh, our footprint just from from that particular product by about a factor of 10 which is quite a bit. Uh, but if you compare that with how much you would reduce uh, your footprint if you went to plant-based products that is a, about a factor of 100. Uh, and that's the reason why shifting to more towards more plant-based diets has such a big impact because we're really talking about different scales here. Organic махыг байгаль орчин өөр амьсгалд үзүүлэх нөлөө багта гэх нь би. Гэтэл Оксфордын их сургуулийн эрдэмтдийн судалгаагаар органик мах болон ердийн аргаар үйлдвэрлэсэн мах нь хөлөмжийн хий ялгаруулалтаараа он цалгаагүй болохыг тогтоожээ. So in our data we didn't find big differences between organic and conventional across multiple indicators. What we did find is that no matter how you produce animal products, even the lowest impact forms of production still create higher emissions and use more land than typical vegetable proteins. So that's saying something really important. That's saying that even if you go into the shops and try and purchase sustainable meat or dairy, it's always going to be better to purchase vegetable proteins instead. 
Америкийн нэгдсэн улсын засгийн газар жил бүр жимс ногооны ажлууд 20 сая орчим ам долларын татаас өгдөг бол харин Макс үүний ажлууд 38 тэрбум долларын нүсэр том татаас засгаас олгодог. Макс үү бүтээгт хүн эзнээс болж үүссэн өвчлөлттэй холбогдох зардалд Америкийн нэгдсэн улсын татвар төлөвчд жил бүр ойролцоогоор 314 тэрбум доллар зориулж байна. when you you know cram you know tens of thousands of animals in these cramped filthy unhygienic conditions basically live atop their feces it's just like a breeding ground animal to human diseases that arise um, because of the way we're now treating animals whether it's these live animal markets in East Asia um, whether it's the bush meat trade and the concern is that with enough spins at genetic roulette on these swine factory farms, these chicken factory farms, we're gonna, you know, end up with one of these viruses that's not only deadly to chickens, but can jump and, and transmit human to human and cause the next human pandemic. The risk of large-scale factory farmings increases the risk that we, or the likelihood that we might have a pandemic, particularly of influenza in the future. This pandemic has been very severe, but this is not necessarily the big one. Хагас сая хүний амьд хүрсэн гахан ханя дээр гахан фермес гарсан гэж үздэг. Дох болон Эбола-гийн вирус нь амьтны мах эзнээс ойрх дорнодын амьсгалын цочмог хам шинжин тэмээ тэмээний мах сүнээс гарсан гэдэг бол амьсгалын цочмог халтаа хам шинжийг амьд амьтны усан захаас гарсан гэдэг. Саяхны COVID-19 цар тахлыг үүсэл бас ийм гэж үздэг. Шугууны ханиадыг тахианы фермуд ба мөн амьд амьтдын усан захаас гарсан гэдэг. Цаашлбал улаан бурхан өвчний вирус үнэний фермес үссэн гэж үздэг. People know now what a global pandemic feels like and they've seen the effects they will be feeling the effects for many years to come and this is a chance I think an opportunity to point out that this particular route of infection is is a, a, a very concerning one. Дэлхийн эрвэл мэндийн байгууллага антибиотикийн дараах ирэн үе ойртож буй зарлажээ. Гарн дээр хөчүүхэн шалбархаач үхэлт хөгж мэдэхгүй ирнэ гэсэн үг. Амьдрал аврагч хідэд антибиотикийг хэтрүүлэн хэрэглэснээс болж үйлчлэх байсан. Гэхдээ хүн би хэтрүүлж хэрэглэсэн биш. Харин өдөр бүр тэрбум тэрбум мал амьдтад өгдөөс болж байгаа аж. for six years, one thing I know is that if people knew what happened in the production of their food, they wouldn't eat meat. So one of the things that we would hit every day was pus nodules, tumors, cysts. It was something that we would hit on a daily basis. Having worked in a supermarket chain, I was, I saw this firsthand every single day. So here's one that's running along the shoulder blade. Oh. Yeah, that is what I remember in the butchery. It comes out like a thick toothpaste. I remember that every single day. That's interesting to hear you had that experience yeah. all the way over there because in the UK exactly the same. Yeah. Uh we would see that on a daily basis. But th- those people who say it's uh it's not my butcher does this. No. Yeah. They need to open their eyes because yeah. if their butcher's being honest with them. We know. Yeah. We both know. We were and in, and, we and were any honest butcher is going to admit yeah. it. They're not going to want to tell the public because it's going to affect their business. Yeah. But it is a fact. And me yeah. working in multiple butcheries, I saw these common trends across the board. So I know that it wasn't just isolated to the one that I was working in. It was across the board for me. People need to reconnect with what they're eating and the whole process that we were we're yeah. talking about here of how that food gets to them um, is hidden from them and it's hidden for a reason because if they saw it it would most definitely make them want to think harder about what they're eating. Дэлхийн далай ба агаар мандал дуларч эхэлмэгц манай гаргийн усны эргэлт өөрчлөгдөж эхэллээ. Climate change changes the water cycles of the planet. The heat that's being generated is forcing the precipitation into the clouds so we're getting more concentrated precipitation in our clouds and more dramatic extreme and unpredictable water events all over the world 
Алс номхон далайн Тайван арлын умрд хэсгийн уулархаг өндөрлөг нутагт Атаял ястан амьдардаг. Тайванд эрс дэс уур амьсгал шин юм биш. Гэвч сүүлийн жилүүдэд далайн шуурга илүү хүчтэй бөгөөд илүү олон тохиох болжээ. Энэ нь Атаял угсаатны амьдралын хив маягт нэн хүн дээр нөлөөлж байна. Гимсо болох мисүү гани үе хоба үе чи бог. Болох хани хага Yakna, Yavata, Utukayan. Walakaniga, Julian Mahaga, Yuan, you, Maha, Mukung, Machaka. You're all a big cheap on a tokiga. Yavatukayan, Yakna, Shara, Jorobla, Yakna. И не пишут мне на уй. Бабау нага, шига, токата на нах, мне дом. Нагата, мне не якай на оразьяо. Якай лунгандала, лунгандала, мне не мах чатай. Дэлхийн олон газар оронд үер ус эрс хэсэж байхад өөр бусад газарт эсрэг зүйл тохиолдож байна. Дэлхийн асар арван нутаг дэвсгэр ган гачигт хит нэрвэгдэж 1000 тоноор нь ургацаа алдан сая сая тариалан ч талбайгаа услах хангалттай усгүй зүдэрч байна. I'm definitely worried about the future of our farm. I think um, we're seeing, you know, much more, uh, many more swings in climate than we've seen in the past. But we want to use uh, all the land that we have to grow food. Um, but we haven't been able to just because of the, uh, the shortages of water. It'll have an impact on food supply and prices and uh, availability. And so estimates now are between 500,000 to over a million acres of farmland that'll come out of production in California. Испани өмнөд дутаг Алмария 31,000 га талба бүхий байгуламжд хүнсний ногооны тариалан гэрхэлдэг. Алмария анд Европ ТВ-ийн хүн сангамжийн тогтолцооны чухал бүрэлдэх хүн хэсэг болох жимс ногооны тэн хагасыг нийлүүлдэг байна. Гэтэл харамсалтай нь Испани сүүлийн 20 жилийн турш дан гачигт нэрвэгдэв. Үүнийг өөр амьсгалын өөрчлөлттэй нягт холбоотой гэж мэрэгчлэнүүд үзэж байна. In terms of water, the truth is that the drought in Spain has become a complete catastrophe. Our harvests are decreasing in massive quantities. Last year, in the area we are now, there was almost no harvest. People don't realize the food system is collapsing. The king or M's king took the Tony Urchitin with mass. Africa they are going to get you guns each day. Олон зун сай хүнийг өндний усаар хангадаг гол нуурууд ширгэж хатаж байна. Ховордож буй энэ баялгийн төлөөх зөрчил тэмцэл шинээр гарах тусам амьдрахын эрхэнд хүмүүс умр зүгт олноо шилжин суурших хөдөлгөн эхэлснийг бид харж байна. Уур амьсгалын дүрвэгсэд өөрсдийгөө болон гэр бүлээ найдвартай гэж боддог европын эрэх төрөхийн төлөө ямар ч эрсдэл хүлээхэд бэлэн. Орчин цагийн энэ өргөн хүрээтэй шилжин суурьшилтанд хариу болгож Испан улс Мелила дахь өмнөд хийлийн хай дагуу нүсэр хан босгоод байгаа ажээ. Ханны цаанд бүгнэрсэн 1000 дөрвөгсөд Испаний цагдаагийн байгууллагыг сандаргаж байна. Шилжин суурьш хөдөлгөн ихсэн гэж таамаглаж байгаа үед дэлхийн нийтээр үүнийг зохицуулах бэлтгэл муу байгаа нь улам тодорхой болж байх шиг. Монголын 
гоё цүл нутаг дэвсгэрийн бус тэсгэрүү улам түрэн тэлж буйн замдаа таарсан амтай бүхнийг залгих жаратан гэлтэй. Амтан ба хүнийг алгчлгүй дэтгэдэг олон ус нуур идэвгэ хатаж хэрэгжээ. Нуур ус хатаж хэрэгсээр байвал хүмүүс төрсөн нутгаа орхин холдож хүнийн төтгөрөө нүхээс өөр аргагүй төрнө. Монголчууд байгаль дэлхийдээ дасан зогцож амьдэр сар ирсэн. Гэхдээ байгаль орчин арай л дэндүү огцом хөвсөж байна уу та гэж. Энэ дэлхий дээр амь өрсөж үлдэхийн тулд их л тэвчээр те хатуужилтай байх хэрэгтэй болох юм дээ. A lot of people talk about how much fresh water we use for hydro fracking. 700 billion gallons globally is wasted on fracking. So 700 billion gallons. Sounds like a lot. But animal agriculture, the production of animals that we use for meat around the globe uses 70 trillion gallons of fresh water a year. Hundreds of thousands of times as much as fracking. And, and, and we give the, the cows and the chickens the good stuff, right? They don't get the Flint, Michigan, lead-tainted condoms floating in it water. They get the top shelf stuff because we don't want to screw up our sausage links. And I know what some of you are thinking right now. You're thinking, oh, here's the part. I'm a vegetarian and pigs are people too, man. But no, let's ignore how the animals are treated in our factory torture farming. Let's pretend they're treated amazing for just a minute. It's like a celebrity backstage at the Oscars. They're just being fawned over and they get swag bags with free Apple watches. Point is, you should still be upset about this because animal agriculture is killing us. And corporate media is fantastically pathetic on this topic. They never mention meat production. They never mention that a quarter pounder takes 660 gallons of fresh water to create. That's the, that's the equivalent of showering for two months. So one usually underestimated impact of uh, livestock production is the huge amounts of fresh water required uh, for that production to be maintained and to be increased. The problem is that in many places, uh, water is being used much faster than the natural renewal rates. Overall, in the world, uh, 1.8 billion people are living in areas with severe water scarcity. The livestock sector is the single biggest water user in the world. One third of the water use in the world is being used for producing animal products, meat and dairy. And it's not because those animals drink so much, it's really because there's a lot of water required to make the feed for the animals. If we want enough fresh water for future generations, water alone dictates that we must change our diet away from meat and dairy. Dilhi amtni garalgui hunsruul shiljij baga hangalta barimd dilhi ng unzug bolom bur tajigliddaj naidu turul juayn. Хоёрмын хор нэг онд их британд хамгийн олон буюу 580 мянган хүн веган нэгдүгээр сар нэртэй аянд гарын үсэг зурч хамрагджээ. Их британий банд тулсад одоо өөрийгөө веган гэж үздэг хүн дөрөн сая гаруй байна. Канадын хүн амын 10% орчмон веган эсвэл цагаан холтон байна. Америкийн нэгдсэн улсад шеф ахлах тоооч нарын 50% нь веган хоолд сэсэндээ оруулсан ба веган хэв маягийн амьдрал сүүлийн 3 жилд 650 нэмэгджээ. A few years ago, it was quite a challenge to get hold of good vegan food, but today we're pretty much spoiled for choice, and there are vegan options everywhere. Mm, yeah, thanks. It tastes like a normal hot dog. Is it a normal hot dog? Like, as in, like, or is this, like, plant-based or something? Is it... So it is actually plant-based, mm. yeah. So it's really is. nice. I prefer it, because I don't really eat meat that much, so this is good. Okay. I like meat and it tastes good. Yeah. For not being meat. Mm. Mm. Would you be happy with that? Yeah, no. I'd be stoked. I love meat too much. 
So I feel like if I went pot based, I'd miss it. But if this like stuff tastes the same, yeah, I'd be very happy with this. Nice messy fingers. It is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's all I'm Thank you. It would interest you to know that that's completely pot based. And I wouldn't know. So that I would definitely. Wow, that's a winner. Yeah, I'm amazed. If burgers always tasted like that, would you be happy to just not eat a beef burger? Yeah, again? no, I got a good way to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like you to tell me which one of these nuggets is plant-based and which one is real meat. Okay. It's very hard to say which one is. <laughs> and they taste exactly the same, honestly. These are not the chicken. No. Interesting. Which one of this is animal meat and which one of this is plant based? Meat or not meat? You're not sure. No. You're not sure. Yeah, you're not, yeah, I'm not sure. Meat. You? Yes. Are uh, wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. But you think the second one was chicken? Yeah. The second one was actually plant based. No way. Yeah, and the first one no was chicken. Way. Yeah? Um, okay, I didn't. <laughs> I, I couldn't have guessed that. I definitely thought the first one. Yeah, definitely. It seems that changing what we eat to a more sustainable diet can also coincidentally be very beneficial to our health. There is a growing understanding that we can actually prevent and in many cases even reverse some of our most common diseases all through a shift towards a whole food vegan diet. Humans can survive on many different kinds of diet. But many decades of research has now shown us that the best way of not just surviving, but truly thriving is on a whole food plant-based diet. The human can be healthy on a plant-based diet without any animal products. The major dietetic associations around the world, including the British Dietetic Association, have produced statements to say exactly that, that a diet made up of whole plant foods is healthy for humans all stages of their life. And not only can they be healthy, but they can restore or reclaim their health adopting a plant-based diet. There are certain areas, certain populations around the world that have extraordinary health and longevity. For example, the largest number of centenarians, people that live over 100, these so-called blue zones. What's really interesting about the blue zones, they actually have more centenarians than anywhere else in the world. And a centenarian is someone that lives at least 100 years. Uh, but, but what's really interesting about the blue zones is when people reach these advanced ages, they are still productive. So the blue zones have taught us a lot. And the bottom line is we really want to try to emulate what the people of the blue zones are doing. Cynhyr bus gigdig tawn bus nutgan Japani Okinawa, Italian Sardine, Greking Ikar, Costa Rican Nicoya, Californian Lomo Lindayum. So the question is, well, what do they all have in common? They have a predominantly plant-based diet. They have a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, soy, lentils, chickpeas. They have a diet rich in all these nutrients, and that's one thing that they have in common. So the EPIC study is the European Prospective Investigation into Cancer and Nutrition. It followed over half a million individuals from 10 European countries for more than 15 years. Those in the EPIC study that were eating predominantly plant-based or eating high levels of fruits and vegetables lived longer, had lower incidence of cancer and heart disease. About 2,500 of the individuals in the EPIC Oxford only ate plant food, so they were vegan. Um, and even though they weren't the most healthy vegans or healthy plant eaters, you could show that these plant eaters were healthier um, they had a lower incidence of heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. From everything we have discovered on this journey, it seems that moving away from animal foods to plant-based foods instead can not only give us a whole host of amazing health benefits, but also gives us a chance to be able to leave a sustainable planet for future generations to come. Perhaps the single most meaningful change that we can make as individuals is ultimately deciding what ends up each day on our plates. We are running out of time. The world community must acknowledge that animal agriculture is the most destructive industry on our planet. 
We can't wait for government policies and other organizations to create a better life for ourselves. We need to stand up now and make our voices heard. Globally, for the typical consumer, avoiding meat and dairy is probably the single biggest way to reduce your impact on Earth. Without addressing uh, what we eat, we simply won't make it. This is a number one priority. This is a next step in taking responsibility for our communities, our planet, our biosphere, our fellow species. People say, what can I do as an individual? It feels overwhelming. Well, you can make individual choices. We all can. Our individual choices affect the collective choices. When you hear about airplanes and cars, and we're still going to use those things. But the choices we make in our diet, this agricultural business where we use animals as the primary source of protein, the one thing I think we can all do is, and individuals is make our own individual choices, how we're going to live, how we're going to eat. Plant-based diet makes all the difference in the world. Just make some choices that are good for you, and being good for you will be good for the planet. Эн гарг бол бидний гэр юм. Одоо чухам юу болох нь биднээс л шалтгаална. Бид нэгэн зорилгын төлөө хамтдаа зогсохоороо агуу зүйлсийг бүтээж чаддгийг түүх олон та батлан харуулсан. Аж амьдралаа цэцэглүүлэх сайхан дэлхийг бүтээх боломж бидний өмнө байна. Гэхдээ бидэнд хугацаа баг байна. Цаг хугацаа шах байна.